Star Trek Starfinder, based on characters, themes, and situations created by Gene Roddenberry. Also based on the multiplayer online game, Star Trek Online, created and maintained by Cryptic Studios and owned by Perfect World Entertainment. Season 1, Episode 2, Balance. Captain's Log, Stardate 89963.55. Dwarf galaxies have been documented throughout the history of astrophysics. What makes the outback of perplexing phenomena is that the concentration of dark matter and dark energy around it has anchored it to not only resist the tidal forces, but to remain fixed in its orbit with gravitational door to the Alpha Quadrant via Alpha Centauri. This poses the question that must be answered by our mission. Was this done artificially by an advanced race? And if so, was it the Iconians, or the mysterious war monks we have heard mentioned? Stress has been unusually strong among the crew over the last few days, and our ship's counselor, Counselor Phil, has been quite busy. I was born at a young age. Okay, wow, look at the time. Is my session over, Doc? You have been here two minutes. Really? Wow, you must be good. I stayed one minute longer than the last counselor. The captain ordered you to attend regular sessions, Sergeant. Why don't we try and make them constructive? I don't see how. It's not like I'm easy to figure out. Hmm. You just got done flirting with the deputy chief of security, a young, attractive Vulcan named Lieutenant Valor. Why don't you tell me how that's going? What? Whoa, how did you... I'm Betazoid. And before you cry invasion of privacy, I can't help reading people's minds when they are in emotional states. It's reflexive, and not something I can tune out or switch off. Phil, is that a common Betazid name? Sounds awfully human. It's a family name, but this isn't about me. We are here to talk about you. Tell me about... Lieutenant Valor. She's hot. Young. By Vulcan standards, anyways. Graduated early from the Academy. After some kind of incident with Borg and Vulcan Katras. Not really sure of the details. Some classified incident. I hear things. So you have a romantic interest in a young Vulcan female. I would assume a challenge? I like a challenge. It's part of a Mako's life. But yeah, she seems to enjoy my company. And how have you been handling the responsibility of taking charge of the makeup since Major Shepard's death? Fine. Just fine. Ooh, apples. Well, mm, it's good. Have an apple, Burns. Mmm. Mmm. Don't mind if I do. Mmm. How old is this apple? Mmm. Red alert. All hands to battle stations. Sir, looks like a convoy of Deferi starships. Civilian transports and freighters being attacked by a Breen battlecruiser. Chell Gret class. She's heavily armed, but at the cost of reduced shield power, her hull is weakly armored. Deferi? Breen? In the outback? How did they cross Alpha Centauri undetected? My guess is Tholian interphasic rifts. I expect many strays will be popping up randomly as we go. Hail the Breen, JJ. Channel open. Breen Vessel, this is the Federation Starship Starfinder. Break off your attack on the Deferi or we will open fire. This is Thought Star of the Breen Confederacy. The Sephiri are hovering a criminal on the run from Breen Justice. Stand down. I will arrange for this to be settled fairly aboard my ship where we can. I'm nothing so, Federation weaklings. Prepare to be destroyed. Green are coming about and targeting Starfighter. We have superior range with our weapons. If they think we're going to wait to be fired on first, they're in for a rude awakening. Commander? JJ, hit them hard and make it count. Fire all weapons. Phasers and quantum torpedoes firing.
Her forward shields are down. We've caused heavy damage. Her main weapons are offline. The brain ship is warping off. They've retreated. We're being held by one of the Deferi ships. On screen. We are grateful. I am Deferi Ambassador Solis. Our convoy of refugees are seeking a new settlement to call home. After the Borg invaded our homeworld, Defira. Captain Andy of the Federation starship Starfinder. The Breen claimed you were harboring a criminal. Balance must be kept, Captain. The man they speak of is right here. Hello, I am Kanai. Vorta and extremely intoxicated at the moment. A Vorta? What the? No kidding, Zeller. This should be interesting. Captain's Log, Supplemental. I have had the Deferi Ambassador and the Vorta beamed aboard Starfinder and brought to the observation room. Once again, thank you, Captain. The Vorta is Kenai, and is a friend. He came to Deferi representing the True Way and requested Sanctuary when he decided to leave them. True Way? Oh yes. That pathetic Cardassian terrorist organization that plagues the Bed Ursi sector and harasses the Federation. I understand they breed their own Alpha Gemidar and make use of left-behind Dominion technology. Quite correct. I was originally one of the Vortas stuck in the Alpha Quadrant when the war ended. That was three clones, maybe four clones ago. Why would you continue to fight a war unsanctioned by the Founders? Because there were Founders stranded in the Alpha Quadrant who desired it. The Breen accuse you of crimes against their people. Would you care to explain? Oh, the Breen. The Breen. <sighs> Two clones ago, during the last day of the war, I commanded a battle squadron made up of Breen and Dominion ships. When the order to cease fire and stand down came from the Founder, Thought Tsar refused to comply. He prepared to launch a new offensive against the Federation and Klingon lines. For his disobedience, I ordered my ships to open fire and destroy his. Only, his ships escaped. Several years and two clones later, serving the True Way, a Cardassian Gull and I ran into Thought Tsar, when the True Way arranged a secret meeting to discuss a potential alliance with the Breen. I'm guessing he recognized you, and that didn't go over well? To say the least, Thought Tsar told the Gull the Breen would only help the True Way if I were eliminated, and so... The Gull killed me. On the spot. He figured I would still be of service to him when the next clone was activated. But Thought Tsar knows about the cloning. He told the Gull he would not be satisfied until my entire genetic batch and cloning facility were destroyed. Barbaric. This brain is obviously unreasonable. We should hunt down a ship and destroy him, Captain. Thought Zara's ship is Chelgret class. She does have an impressive arsenal, but is a rather weak hull. She wasn't that wise coming out here alone. Still, I do have to take into consideration the safety of the Deferi convoy. Ambassador, 
The Deferi are not members of the Federation. My obligation to defend you can only be allowed to sidetrack my mission in the Outback to a certain reasonable degree. I quite understand, Captain. Balance must be maintained. I humbly suggest allowing Kenai to seek Sanctuary here on Starfinder. It would protect him, and the Breen would likely cease attacking my people if he were not among us, and balance would be restored. A logical suggestion. I would recommend conferring with our resident Breen officer, Captain. Very well. Dr. Torek, give Kenai here a full medical exam. Let's make sure he isn't hiding anything from us, at least in the biological sense. Oh dear. Will there be probes? I hate probes. Thought Tsar used probes on me. Very intrusive. If you are referring to rectal probes, our medical technology is beyond the need for such primitive methods. However, if you do not behave yourself, I cannot guarantee probes will not be considered. Oh, you Vulcans. You are so cold and sinister. I do not know whether to believe you or not. You have what humans call... The perfect poker face. Computer. Play message. Authorization Stark. Section 31 Alpha Z. Stark. Yolanda here. I'm transmitting encrypted technical specifications to allow you to modify personal shields to become personal temporal shields. The modified shield will protect you from any changes in time caused by temporal disturbances, anomalies, or weapons of a temporal nature. I can't go into much detail yet, but the Department of Temporal Investigations and Section 31 have begun to... <sighs> clash, shall we say. Something is happening we became aware of, something big. As per our charter, our job, as you know, is to defend the Federation from threats, no matter what the source. The problem is, DTI has an agenda that conflicts with this particular threat handling. The threat source seems to be the use of temporal technology from sources unknown at this moment. DTI is determined to make sure we do not fight fire with fire and cause more temporal problems by using temporal technology to defend our own interest. You can see the problem here. My sources have uncovered intelligence that someone aboard Starfinder is an agent from another time. This agent could be from the past, the future, we don't know. But they have an agenda that involves Starfinder in the Outback, possibly stopping the ship from doing something that is considered of historical importance. I've sent you schematics to replicate a temporal tricorder. This tricorder design was made in the future, or will be. We have a lot of technology recovered from various ops and from the future. Use the tricorder, keep an eye out at even the slightest use of temporal technology. This agent will eventually make some use of his or her own tech, and when they do, you will have the tools to detect it and track them down. Good luck, Agent Stark. Report back on the encrypted comm link should you uncover any new information. Yolanda, out. Hmm. Temporal tricorder, huh? Temporal personal shields? Better get cracking and make these. Mind if we join you, Barnes? Devera! Private. Uh, what's your face? Yeah, yeah. Pull up some chairs. What you drinking, Sarge? Right, jelly and tequila. I thought tequila was made on Earth. Eh, yeah, Sergeant Dust, the Rigelian NCO of Thunder Squad, insists they invented it first. Here, guys. Join me in a toast. <laughs> uh, what are we toasting? I'm getting up the nerve to ask out Lieutenant Valor. The Vulcan? I mean, she's beautiful, but why would you ask out a woman with no emotions? After being married to a Klingon and an Andorian, a Vulcan might just turn out perfect for me. Have you ever thought about dating someone you already get along with? Where's the challenge in that? Cheers! <coughs> Holy <Ooh>. crap! Guys, <laughs> I think it would be... <laughs> uh, oh. Clean up. Over here, please. Look, Zeller, that private just threw up. <laughs> Zeller, that's not nice. You don't know for sure if he even has a dead mother. Well, um, besides, the life of a Mako as we know is dangerous. If I die, a Vulcan girlfriend would not get as upset as anyone else. Hey, that's not a bad idea, Sarge. Me? I just program holiday girlfriends. Same idea. 
So you want a date according to who would be the least affected by you dying in battle. <laughs> Maybe there are other people who would care if that happened already? Yeah? Like who? You know someone who likes me and didn't tell me? <sighs> Never mind. You're as thick as transparent aluminum burns. Good luck asking out your Vulcan. I have things to do. Huh. Wonder what set her off. Redheads. Human or Trill, they all have a temper. Yeah, I caught that too, Zeller. Burns needs a swift kick in the head. Oh well. Let's go get some ice cream. Ow! Zeller! Hey, why did Zeller hit me? Oh man, sorry about that, Burns. Zeller is... A little touched in the head sometimes. Shut it, Zeller. Don't do it again, Zeller. I don't want to have to hurt you. Zeller, 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 Zeller! Ah! Whoa, fuck. Ah! <laughs> Zeller! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I think Zeller just stabbed Sergeant Burns. That'll just happen. Medic! <laughs> Zeller just stunned him. He'll be alright. Sarge, 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 talk to me. Can you hear me? Mama? I fish you're looking at me, funny mama. Zeller, we're going. I, no, I don't care that you think you're tougher than a Mako. You can't even hold your ice cream in zero G. I can't take you anywhere. Uh oh, here comes security. Oh, look, it's Lieutenant Valor. Funny how that worked out. Hmm. Broken table. Burns on the ground drooling. A typical Saturday night at the watering hole, or an altercation. Any witnesses here care to inform me of what transpired? Why do your ears look pointy? Hmm. I believe somebody should move Burns so the cleanup crew can mop up that spot. Also, Burns, are you injured? Or is this your nap time? Nappy nap. Good night. Hmm. I believe he is twitching more than is typical for Burns after a few drinks. His nervous system appears impaired. Has he suffered more than the effects of alcohol? He got zapped. I see. And I need to make a report to Lieutenant Zoll as to what transpired. Who zapped Burns? He's lying. I have no clue why, but my collective instincts tell me he's hiding something. Sola seems to trust him. The Deferi aren't known for being deceitful. I agree with the captain. His erratic behavior is consistent with over-excessive cloning. The long-term memories of a Vorda can be traumatic if passed on too rapidly from clone to clone. Zol, are you familiar with Thought Czar? Is it normal for a brain to follow a vendetta like Kanai described for over 30 years and go to this much effort to track down every last clone of a Vorta in this scenario? Your instincts are correct, Captain. I'm familiar with Thopsar's service during the war. No such incident like this Vorta described took place. When the Founder ordered a ceasefire, the Tsar's ships withdrew back to breathe space right away. Perhaps you could attempt to communicate with him and find out his reasons for hunting down Kanai. Zar will consider me a traitor to the Breen Confederacy for serving the Federation, Captain. As a warrior, Zar is merciless and never forgives what he would consider weakness or acts of dishonor. Breen emotions and thought processes are far simpler and less flexible than many other humanoid races. The closest analogy I can make would be to compare the breed to wolf packs of Earth. I left the pack, and I will always be the mutt that is to be treated as just another animal to kill. Well, that seriously limits our options in talking to Zar. But what about Kanai? Captain, I recommend that Allura speak with Kanai to get more information, lying or not. I am likely the best choice to try to pry the truth from him, Captain. I'm sure you would agree. Very well. Allura, talk to him. Gain his trust. Try and determine the truth of his activities. Meanwhile, we will have to decide what to do about the Deferi. They are seeking a new home out here to settle. Should we follow them for some time and protect their convoy? Or do we break off and wish them luck? 
Our mission is to explore the Outback, Captain. They're seeking an M-class planet to settle on, and we're exploring and charting new worlds. The two goals aren't mutually exclusive, are they? Captain, if Thalsar has his reasons to hunt this border down, and he has come this far, he will not back down now just because you drove his ship off once. He will call for reinforcements. Unless the location for the interphasic rift they stumbled upon to the outback is clearly known, it would take weeks for a transmission to even reach Breen space. We don't know if they do not have the fixed coordinates of the rift, Captain. And a transmission directed to the rift would reach the brain much faster, as well as reinforcements. We also do not know Thought Tsar to not already send for help before we encounter them. She has a point, Captain. I recommend remaining on battle alert for the time being. Commander Vi, how long does an average interphasic rift stay open? Is it indefinite, or is there some kind of shelf life involved? From what I gathered, it depends on the size of the Tholian ships involved producing it. The more energy that is used to create the rift, the longer it will remain open, as the rate of decay is longer. For example, a dreadnought requires a considerable amount of energy to fit through, thus requiring more energy than, say, a water class. Solus's ship would have sensor records of the rift they came through. Get with his bridge officers and get a copy of those sensor logs. Maybe we can guess how long the Breen have to take advantage of this back door into the outback. This will help determine a better plan on how much protection Kenai and the Deferi will need. Dismissed. Let's get to it, people. Burnsy, Burnsy, Burnsy. Just go over and talk to her. Yes, she may be a Vulcan, but she's pretty down to earth compared to most Vulcans that I've met. Besides, she's young. By Vulcan standards, anyways. She's more open minded, you know? Just go for it. Thanks, Sam. I'm prepared for this. What's with that data pad? You'll see. Wish me luck. Good luck! Oh, hello, Sergeant Burns. Good to see you. Care to join me? Yeah, uh, here. I made this for you. I was, uh, too nervous to say it in person. What's this? Hmm. An itemized list of reasons why my dating you romantically would be logical? Yeah, um, <laughs> like I said, I get nervous, so uh, I carefully listed them out on this pad. I see. There are 200 items on this list. Yeah, <laughs> I had to trim that down. Um, there was originally 324. Number 21 is intriguing. Yeah, um... <laughs> That's, yeah, um, that's in centimeters, by the way. Sounded a lot more impressive than inches. I see. This is quite a comprehensive approach to asking me out on a date, Sergeant. Comprehensive? Yeah, that's me. That's me. That's how I roll. This is most unexpected, but I am impressed with your thoroughness. Give me time to carefully read through this list and I will provide an answer in a reasonable time frame. If you will excuse me, I must return to duty. Of course. Um, here. Live long and prosper. Those are the wrong fingers to use for the salute, Burns. That hand signal is equivalent to what humans would call giving the bird to me. Son of a bitch. Sorry, uh, so, uh, yeah, get back to me on that. Uh, have a good duty shift or something. Is that a normal human mating ritual? No, 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 no. That's just Burnsy. He's in charge of the Makos on Starfinder. That man is the leader of your troops? Seriously? Yes, that's right. And the Dominion lost the war to men like this? I need another drink. Coming right up. Ah, Alora. Two Vorta customers in one day. How fortunate for me. What can I get for you? I will have a Samuel Adams. Ah, I see the Makos are rubbing off on you. One me coming right up. I see you have adapted to living among the Federation crew. 
And I have noticed you are not as resistant to alcohol as most Vorta. This genetic abnormality is a sign of overcloning syndrome. Very perceptive. You are correct. I did rapidly clone in a shorter span than most. You are not being truthful with us. What is the real reason thoughts are hunched down? I was truthful. In one timeline, what I stated did happen. <laughs> Although the irony of temporal mechanics. Timeline? Are you saying you are a time traveler? Yes and no. Originally, I was sent back from the future to change the outcome of the Dominion War. But my efforts were thwarted by a Federation time agent. I almost succeeded, but she managed to undo the damage. But you see, Thought Czar was the key to my failure. I'm listening. I had personal shield modifications that allowed me to be unaffected by the changes in timeline. Temporal personal shields. I recruited Thought Czar to assist in another attempt, gave him the settings. We failed over and over to alter the war's end in the Dominion favor. I finally blamed him and ordered his squadron destroyed. The Time Agent was able to destroy my temporal technology. I had no means to try again. I decided to blend in and join the true way. Thought Czar remembered all because he was protected like me from changes in the altered timelines. He hunted me down and killed me over and over again. But I had clone facilities hidden in several positions. Genetic batches spread out. But over the years, of course, it affected me. He has been obsessed at destroying me, because the temporal events had an unexpected effect on his green brain. Then you are endangering Starfinder. I will inform the captain that giving you sanctuary is an unnecessary risk. It isn't just about me. There's a war being centered here, in the Outback. Zar is a recruit now for enemies that you don't even know exist yet. My being here is just a bonus for him. Starfinder is his main target. You will tell the captain whatever is needed to avoid destruction. Or, I will personally end your cloning line. Good day. Hello, Commander Abrams. I see you're sitting alone. May I join you? Oh, Allura. Sure. Have a seat. Thank you. What are you drinking? Hmm. Oh, this is a home-brewed beer Sergeant Burns makes that they keep stocked at the bar. I think he calls it reverse polarity. I see. I have tried human beer since coming aboard, but not one made by Sergeant Burns. What does it taste like? Here, try a sip of mine. Thank you. Interesting. Whoa, fair warning. Burns makes his L potent. Chugging it down may make you a bit tipsy. For it, I have a high tolerance for alcohol. Mmm, that was good. Barkeep, two reverse polarities over here, please. So, are you and your Jim Hadar adjusting to being on Starfinder? I believe so. It is a challenge, I'll admit. Hmm, interesting. What is? For it, I have exceptional hearing. It lets me eavesdrop on people from a distance. Sergeant Burns just started a courtship of some sort with the Vulcan female over there. Oh. That's Lieutenant Valor, Deputy Security Chief. Oh, hell. He's given her the list. The list? Burns has a signature pickup style. He writes a long list of reasons why a woman should go out with him and tries to charm them. The last time I saw him do this, he was drunk and tried to pick up some regalian lady named Ensign Helma. Oh? Regalian women are... What's the polite way to say this? Unattractive? That goes without saying, unless you're a Rajalian. And what about Chills? How do they go about their courtships? Well, if there's someone they have their eye on, and they find them attractive, they say something like, Allura, would you go on a date with me? Maybe a nice holodeck picnic on the beach of Veros 4. Hmm. I'm not quite sure that's a good idea, actually. My Jemadar are very protective. 
They may try to kill you for violating me with your inferior Federation DNA. No offense, man. You're gonna make me work for it, aren't you? Of course. Good ale. Well, it was nice talking with you, JJ. I must be going. I'll see you on the bridge. <laughs> Let the games begin. Looks like some temporal activity nearby. Let's see if I can trace it. Wow, who's that gorgeous red-haired falcon? Never seen her before. Hold it right there. Took you long enough. This time you found me out about an hour longer than last time. Say again? I don't know who you are, lady, but you seem to be in possession of temporal technology. This is the fifteenth time I've had to introduce myself. It certainly keeps our relationship fresh. Relationship? Look, you better explain yourself before I stun you and- I'm Tequila. You and I are lovers. Well, in other timelines we were. This one, we'll have to see how things go. Uh, lovers? Not that I can't imagine that, I know but... you have a temporal tricorder there from Section 31. I know all about you. I'm from the 31st century. I'm a Federation time agent. Okay, makes sense, I suppose. But how do I know you speak the truth? You don't. But you have great instincts. The reason I trust the decisions you'll make is you and I have had a long working relationship. Well, we will have one, from your point of view. It's all in my past for me. But, uh, what fond memories. Especially the anti-gravity lovemaking on Pharaohs 5. Uh, look. Do you mind explaining a bit less crazy and a bit more logically? And you're awfully emotional for a Vulcan. Romulan, actually. In the 31st century, Romulans are a part of the Federation. Klingons also. Alright. My guts tell me you're speaking the truth. But do you mind explaining to me what's going on? Of course. Why don't we head to the watering hole for dinner? I'll explain everything. Alright, I have to say, I hope this timeline stays intact, and everything in between us is remembered for good. So do I. Though it has been a bit fun. First times for you, and all fourteen times so far for me. Fourteen? I thought you reintroduced yourself fifteen times. I did. But the second time, I was forced to blow you out of Starfinder's airlock when you were about to turn me in. But hey, we've gotten past that part already. You're good. Okay. That's good to know. I've carefully examined the Defari sensor logs, Captain. My estimate is that rift could last well over three months before finally collapsing. It's pretty freshly made. Is it within our sensor range now? Barely, sir, but I can modify a sensor buoy that we could drop here. Could piggyback our sensor range for a few light years if we wanted to keep an eye on it. Do it, Nital. I want to be alerted if any ships come through that rift. Hi, Captain. I can drop the buoy and have a sensor algorithm set up within 20 minutes. I'll have Rigelian meatloaf, earth white rice with butter, a baked potato with sour cream, and a glass of Romulan ale. 2286 if you have it. Romulan Ale 2286. That is hard to come by. I may have one bottle left. Sam, you owe me for fixing your replicator as fast as I did during last week's rush hour. <laughs> all right, all right. I do have a bottle of 2286. For special occasions, you know. I'll hook you two up. Uh, your usual lobster dinner, Chief? No, this time I think I'll try what the lady is having, Sam. I feel like experimenting. Rigelian meatloaf can be rough the first time, but I'll let you sort that out. Coming right up, folks. I'll leave the bottle, but you owe me. Just remember, this is not easy to come by. I'm sure I can find a way to repay you, Sam. Thanks.
Okay, so what is happening that requires a time agent? And why have we had to meet again so many times? <laughs> Sorry. Spoilers. But what I can tell you is there's a temporal conflict escalating in the Outback region. The Tholian Rifts contributed to the other factions from this universe and the Mirror Universe to circumvent detection by temporal agencies and begin slowly bringing forces stealthily to the Outback for some sort of major temporal incursion. You lost me in the first sentence. How about English now? Basically, the Outback is a hotbed for new temporal war. There have been a few. Many alternate timelines that stay intact that become created by altering fixed points in time are the result of careful engineering by temporal forces. They create entire timelines to use as staging grounds to quickly manipulate armies, technology, and resources to do their dirty work across time and space. I think I get it. Tech like the temporal personal shields let you agents be aware of changes and act on them. Is that it? Exactly. The thing is, in some cases, minor changes to time are harmless. We can't police every tiny ripple of change a time traveler may cause, but it's a big chain reaction, what we call a temporal event, that can damage space-time and, in the bigger picture, endanger the entire universe. That's where things get trickier. By the way, how's your meatloaf? Good. I didn't know Rogelians even made meatloaf. I have a recipe I got from a friend, Ensign Helena. What year is this again? I wonder if she's commander by now. It gets confusing when traveling time. Chief Stock, forgive the interruption. I need to escort this woman to the brig for questioning. Look, Zal, she's with me. It's nothing to worry about. With respect, Chief Stark, we have orders to detain this woman. Our Vortigest has described and identified her as a possible saboteur from the future. Ah, can I must be on board. He and I have history. It's okay. I'll come along and explain things to the captain. Incidentally, Lieutenant Valor, right? Yes. You are familiar with me? More with you and Sergeant Byrne's daughter. She and I dated for a while, or rather we will. She looks more like you, I think. Okay, let's go. My daughter. My daughter. Sergeant Burns and I mate and have a child. Captain's Log Supplemental. I am on my way to the brig to question the alleged time-tampering woman, Tequila. Phil? She's telling the truth. I sense no deception on her end. But I do read Kne as being guarded and very paranoid right now. Lies! Okay, fine. I need a drink. Captain, it's an honor to meet you. The question I have, Tequila, is what do I do with you? My guts tell me you're on our side, but from the sound of it, even you're unsure how time is going to unfold in this temporal... hot zone. Thought Zar is coming for Starfinder soon, Captain. It isn't a historical event. It's the fact that he is currently a servant of the Choir. The Choir? What's the Choir? A scientific dictatorship. The leading power in the Outback right now. They began like you but evolved into self-procreating, self-aware synthetic beings who are synced to a collective consciousness similar to the Borg. Ancient and powerful, they have a religious order of their kind that broke off and formed their own military force called the War Monks. The War Monks? We heard mention of them among the first species we've encountered in the Outback. They seem to have posed themselves as deities to the less advanced races here. So Thought Tsar serves the choir. My superiors believe the Choir of the 29th Century are a faction in the New Temporal War. They are using the Tholian interphasic rift intrusions to master temporal incursions into the past to change events to their favor. Thought Zaro is a temporal agent for them at this time. They seized the opportunity of his being in the region and recruited him to act for them. Let her out, Zal. Thank you, Captain. I have the feeling Thought Tsar is back. Status? Thought Tsar is back, but he has a bigger ship. And friends. Three green dreadnoughts, heavily armed, moving to intercept us. We need to even the odds. Launch Scorpio. All hands, prepare for saucer separation. I can command the battle bridge if you wish, sir. No need, Commander. I can be in two places at once. Initiating multitask mode. 
Ah, hello, Captain. Lieutenant Pelkey, holographic tactical officer of the Battle Bridge. Mr. Pelkey, ready all weapons. Prepare for separation. Aye, aye, Captain. Okay, that's kind of creepy, Zeller. The captain's in two places at once? Shh, don't think that out loud, Zeller. Saucer separation complete. Scorpio launched and battle ready, sir. Waiting for your orders, Captain. We're going to begin by making the Breen think we are splitting up and engaging one ship each. After the first volley, we all converge on Thought Czar's command ship and focus fire on his bridge, weapons, and engines. If we can destroy his command ship, the others may withdraw. A sound strategy, Captain. By splitting into two smaller segments, you can engage the command ship at point-blank range. His other ships cannot fire upon us. Brilliant! We can also isolate each dreadnought as we engage them up close, cutting off his support. Thotsar should have brought fighters or escorts with him. Captain, I'm showing Commander Abrams the weakest spots on the green ships. It may help. In my experience, Thotsar always did underestimate the enemy's ability to improvise. Outstanding, Mr. Zoll. Okay, people, let's take the fight to him. Attack Pattern Zeronius. Engage. Attack Pattern Zeronius, aye, sir. Power fluctuation, starboard with cells. Transferring auxiliary power. Port shields are down to 60%. Rotating shields to combat site. Our battle section shields are down to 22%. Minor hull breaches. Saucer section shields are holding at 42%. Enemy status? Thought Zara's command ship is heavily crippled. Her weapons and shields are gone. Her engines destroyed. Austin to Captain Scorpio just destroyed Thought Zara's bridge with torpedoes. He's dead, sir. Well done, Chief. Captain, a temporal rift is forming. Sensors indicate a ship is emerging from it. Don't worry. That's a Wells Class Federation time ship. Friendly. Whoa. The time ship just finished the other green ships in short order. They're hailing us. On screen. This is Captain Hartnell of the United Time Ship Starfinder. It's an honor to meet you, Captain. Thank you for the timely intervention, Captain. To Kayla, we got your signal to come help. Captain, I regret that you and your crew have become involved in this temporal conflict. The future is now rather fluid, but we will assist you when needed if it pertains to the temporal war as agents. Beyond that, I have to try my best to keep to the temporal prime directive. Understood, Captain. If I learn anything on my end, is there a way I can contact you? I'll have Tequila provide a means to contact us if it becomes necessary. The future awaits, Captain. I have to take this opportunity to say, of all the past Starfinder captains, you were my captain. Today is to come, Captain. All my love to long ago.
That is a beautiful song, Captain. It is good you play a musical instrument. Once again, thank you on behalf of the Defiri. The planet in which we've named Onili Quea is perfectly suited for colonization. Unili Kea. Accessing Deferi Language Database. Aha! It means star found. That's an interesting choice. I would have expected new Deferi. Balance is the core of Deferi belief. As you know, Captain, naming a world new of the same name implies you're replacing something lost with something gained. But aren't you doing just that? Replacing something you lost with something you gained? Home is in one's heart, Captain. We were never without one. The planet is our reward for achieving balance. The Borg invasion created hardships for our people. By resettling them on fresh soil, we balanced the scales once more. But I have a request. A personal one, Captain. Starfinder's mission to explore the Outback is of interest to my people here, as much as that of the Federation. After all, if my people are to remain safe in this region, it would be helpful if we knew as much about our surroundings as what can be expected, would it not? Hmm. Are you asking me to send reports of our findings to you as we go? Actually, no. I'm requesting to remain on Starfinder. I'd like to join you on your noble mission. I offer my services as an experienced diplomat. I can help with first contact of new races and help resolve disputes. I have been recognized by Starfleet on record. I think that's a great idea, Ambassador. Permission granted. Welcome aboard. Thank you, Captain. I was not aware that you were an artificial intelligence until overhearing some of the crew members talking today. I find it fascinating. I don't feel the need to disclaim what I am to anyone. Just as Commander Vi does not go out of her way to announce that she is Romulan and not Vulcan. However, if you would be interested in discussing it sometime, I would welcome that conversation. You're obviously the product of wise beings, Captain. A messenger, or perhaps an avatar for representing the Federation. I salute you. No one has ever quite described me that way before. Thank you, Ambassador. Burns. Oh. Hi there, Miller. It has been brought to my attention that we are destined to become a couple. Although I find the idea of foresight influencing any decisions and eliminating free will disturbing, I must accept that it is logical that if we are together in the future, there is merit to your advances. Okay, is that a yes to going out with me? Because you lost me in detention. O200 hours, my quarters. I checked the duty roster. We are both free. I will have a Vulcan home meal made for us to enjoy, and you may bring an alcoholic beverage for us of your choice. Wow, sounds great. I'll be here. Good. See you then. Looks like some history is flowing in the right direction. Speaking of which, any chance I can convince you to join me in my quarters? Well, we have just enough time for a memorable night. I have a lot of work to do around the Outback now, as you can imagine, given today's events. And will this be the last time we had to meet for the first time? Okay, that sounded really weird. <laughs> yes, I believe the flow of time is headed in the right direction, as you put it. Now why don't we go to your quarters and make some memories? Anytime, anywhere. Star Trek Starfinder Balance Written and directed by George Silsby Produced and edited by Stephen Trent Starfinder's main theme was created by DJ Tatchett.
Star Trek and all associated marks and characters are registered trademarks of CBS and Paramount Pictures. The use of anything related to Star Trek in Starfinder is not intended to infringe upon the rights of CBS or Paramount Pictures. Star Trek Online is owned by Perfect World Entertainment, created and maintained by Cryptic Studios. All information on Starfinder can be found at ussstarfinder.com, also on Facebook and Twitter. Next time on Starfinder. I don't like this. It's too quiet. You're right, Zeller. There's something eerie about a quiet Klingon ship. Mr. Burns, you're with me. Have your men secure the deck. You're at the captain. Move out, Makos. Pen, Zeller, why don't you take the engineering team and go get life support working? You've got it covered, Captain. Come on, Zeller, let's go to work. Chief Stark, try to figure out what happened here. That goes for your teams as well, Mr. Tork. Yes, sir. This is a triage situation. Identify, prioritize, and move on. Transport only the most seriously wounded to Starfinder's sick bay. If anyone finds this ship's med bay, I want to know immediately. It is time to get to work, people. Valkar should be on the bridge. The rest of you, you're with me. Yo, over here. Bridge. This way. Captain, Zeller has found a problem with the life support. What kind of problem? A nesthesine gas was pumped through the environmental system. He's purging it now. Torque to medical teams. The crew was gassed with anesthesine. Administer 20 cc's of natinolin. Yo, Doc. Hold that order. So we find, uh, what's her face? Uh, General Val Caller. They had a chance to, I don't know, explain our presence here? I agree, Sergeant Burns. Yes, Captain. Stand by with the Nintendo for the time being. The bridge, just a few meters ahead. Reports are coming in from the med teams. We've got a lot of dead, too many injuries, but only a handful are serious. They are being beamed up to the ship. What happened here? I may have an answer to that, Captain. Okay, Burns, go ahead. My teams are reporting that there are definite signs of a struggle inside the ship. If I were to guess, I'd say we're looking at an attempted mutiny. Well, that's not good. Any idea who the mutineers are? Hell if I know, sir. Captain, life support has been restored. Zeller reports that the Krytic's bird of prey is missing. Well, I think we know where the mutineers went. Commander Vaihu, are you monitoring? Yes, Captain. Maintain yellow alert and have Neetal scan the area. What is he looking for, exactly? I don't know. A warp signature, some kind of sign of a cloaked ship, anything unusual that could tell us where that bird of prey went. By the way, by who up? The door to the bridge is sealed from the other side. Can you override it, Sergeant? That should do it. Well, that's not exactly what I meant, but I suppose I can't really argue Work. with the results. Ah. Give me a hand pushing the door open. We're clear. Over here, guys. The general and her first officer. Dr. Torek, what's their condition? The first officer has suffered multiple disruptor impacts and blunt force trauma, but his armor and personal shields took most of the impacts. He does have a minor concussion, easily repaired. The general is seriously wounded. Looks like a pulse wave disruptor blast at close range. Her nervous system is in shock, and she is developing a brain hemorrhage. I'll have to transport her to sickbay immediately. Stand by to beam two directly to sickbay. Let me wake the first officer first. What? Who? who? The disorientation will wear off quickly. Starfleet. I am Captain Andy of the USS Starfinder. I know who you are, Captain. We received your distress call. So you board my ship? 
and pick it apart like carrion birds? No, we... You will not take this shit! Jackson, look out! Uh, 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 oh, he's good. You will not take this shit from me. Burns. Uh, oh, that hurt. Oh. Uh, Sorry, Kathy. Uh, I've been spying with uh, Tractor. Uh, I can heal one angry uh, quick. Uh, oh, I will not uh, let you take uh, this uh, ship. Uh, I will not let you take uh, the general. I believe I understand now. What do you mean, Doctor? You will not. Take her from me! Ah, oh, your breath sinks.